Where have I found you? Where are you on the planet right now? I'm uh, at home in Edwards, Colorado right now. I'm three days away from shipping off to Europe or um, what we hope to be the start of the ski season, the race season. Right, and and I guess um, and that's that's one of the major reasons why you're on today about keeptheflamealive.org and what is going on uh, in the world with COVID-19. You know, we're all focused clearly about the Tokyo Games and how it's affected, but the Beijing Games in 2022, this is pretty significant as well, and it obviously this involves your late father as well. I want to give you the floor here on what you'd like everyone to know about, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, you know, during this time, like you like you mentioned, obviously Tokyo um, has been majorly affected by the pandemic, but it it snow it kind of snowballs, no pun intended, into the fall the upcoming Olympics, and it I think it might go, you know, beyond Beijing even, but um, for the winter athletes who are also pre- trying to prepare for um, the upcoming race season this this season um, competing, but then also next season, which is the Olympic season. It's these these two years are incredibly important for um, for training and getting prepared and having our athletes be the the best prepared we can be um, going into the Olympics and with the pandemic the snow sports industry was hit incredibly hard like i think pretty much across the board all industries were hit but definitely having to close down pretty much everything in snow sports several months earlier than expected and um you know having to shut down u.s ski and snowboard just had to shut down everything like everyone else and it it took a huge hit and then you know kind of waking up in the face of a pandemic and trying to ha- how do we manage running everything again and you know you have a lot of extra costs um a lot of extra travel um travel with including quarantine which adds 14 days to travel and and meals and lodging for athletes that US ski and snowboard would have has been covering um you have testing costs just just doing covid testing um was going to add i think the number i saw was an, an extra million or more to the budget so um what back in the spring af it was a little bit in conjunction after my dad um passed away a, a lot of people were contacting my family and asking where they could donate and we didn't really have an answer in the immediate weeks following his um his passing and in the celebration of life but um we sort of started talking with some really big supporters on the u.s ski and snowboard and um some some people who have donated in the past and came up with this idea of starting a resiliency fund that would bridge the gap that we've lost in in other fundraising events um that at extra costs that athletes are facing personally and that U.S. ski and snowboard is facing in order to help all of the athletes across the board train and, um, you know, use this fund to bridge the gap in costs and try to get us all to be able to keep training and competing heading into the Olympics and be fully prepared as we otherwise would have. And then the it's also, it's kind of a twofold goal. There's another side of it, which is hugely important and part part of why we, named it in honor of my dad was the message of resiliency and especially right now i think it's a really important message to be spreading that um we all all of us everybody no matter what you do no matter what your job is no matter your political backgrounds everybody needs to come together and um and you unite really um and unite behind this message of resiliency of that you can still be strong in the face of disaster in the face of heartache and pain and just terrible things that are going on in everybody's life right now that are going to leave scars for a long time to come but um you know if if i give you some strength maybe you can give me some of your strength and together we can get through it and that's that's where keep the flame alive came from you can there's more details at keep the flame alive.org like you had mentioned but um, that's where that whole message came from and i think the fundraising is hugely important for athletes on the u.s ski and snowboard but um 
message of spreading resiliency that's for me in a lot of ways that's equally as important it's a mental battle it has been for me this entire summer and um there's been we've we've done some interviews with i have an interview up on the website a couple other several other u.s ski and snowboard athletes have some really great interviews and a lot of great insight to share about resiliency on the website and um we're planning to just continue sharing stories and continue sharing that message because um whether you're able to donate or not i think everybody can can use a little something that will uplift them, keep, especially right now. Keep the flame alive.org. Uh, 